Hello, this is Howard Stableford and welcome back to the programme. Right, here's a bit of a recognition quiz for you. We're at the Geneva Motor Show in 1996, admiring a concept car from the studios of American Gary Braddock. His brief was to create a curvy coupe from the basics of the humble Ford Fiesta. Looks great, doesn't it? Sporty, aggressive and attractive. But any guesses what this concept actually became? Ten marks if you guess that this Lynx concept turned into the Ford Puma. This is a great example of a car company testing out public and industry reaction before committing to production. And these days it's more important than ever for financial reasons for manufacturers to react in lightning time. Take the Chrysler Crossfire concept, the first child of the merger between the American Chrysler Jeep and the German Daimler-Benz giants. It was meant to be an American-styled sports coupe, but with European appeal as well, a kind of Route 66 meets the autobahns. Now, it's very rare to get a negative reaction to a coupe. Usually lukewarm reviews give the message to car companies that they needn't bother pushing the production button. But at the Detroit show, the Chrysler Crossfire wowed everybody with its classic clean athletic lines. Built as a one-piece carbon fibre body on aluminium chassis, the design features a central peak line like a spine that runs the length of the car. The boat tail rear emphasises the rear wheels, and the car has a sporty low stance. This concept was revealed at the 2001 show, where the Daimler Chrysler boss Trevor Creed said the famous words, If we were to build it, I feel sure that this could be an instant classic. Well, two weeks later, the decision was made to go with production. Hey, they don't mess around in board meetings there, do they? So here we are, less than a year later, which is astonishing. The Chrysler Crossfire is a production line ready car to be manufactured in Germany. This vehicle is only possible because of the close cooperation and the, and the close um, um, work with our Mercedes sister company. We are we're going to use heavily Mercedes parts and components in the Crossfire. This will in a way be the first child of the merger, so to speak. And it will signify more than ever that uh, as, the, you know, as a, a um, company, as a unified company, we would be stronger than each, the, each part uh, separated from itself. For Wolfgang Bernhard, the car has angelic qualities. The first thing is that from a marketing and customer point of view, we, ha we have now this halo out there that is very important. And it will give radiance and give a glow to the whole brand. That's a very, very much a very important thing. Secondly, with the Crossfire, we have a very sound and strong business case. So uh, we, only, we also make money on that vehicle. That's important, I think, especially these times. It's important to have winners also on the economic side. And, um, and thirdly, I think we prove something with this vehicle. We prove something as a company that uh, we as a company are able, within two years, to, um, to uh, bring a vehicle in the market after you know, uh, showing it as a concept car in Detroit, making decisions fast, getting the business case and the feasibility and technical feasibility done within a couple of months, and making the decisions in a, you know, in a time when nobody expects that the company like us is able to invest into the future we're doing it, and then uh, in a very short period of time, one year showing the production car, two years later, you know, we're out, out there on the street. The Crossfire is a very light car, but powered by a 2.7 litre, 275 brake horsepower V6 engine. Imagine that performance. Chrysler must realise the potential here, as they've even installed a G-force meter as standard. Wonder if you get a parachute as well. <laughs> 